Hello everyone, my name is Fatima Mahmoud. Welcome and welcome back to my channel. This video reflects my own views and opinions, no one else's, and it's not been pre-approved or endorsed by any federal agency or other employer, academic program, or membership association. This is my series on federal application tips, shorter videos, covering topics that some might consider different or unusual. Today's topic is informational interviews, which may seem like one of the most unusual ones when talking about federal job applications. Here I'm using application as an umbrella term to cover the entire hiring process. The target audience is people seeking jobs in federal government or current federal government employees. Of course, local and state government employees could benefit from this information, as well as people working in the nonprofit or private sector. This topic can be called a couple of different things, and you may have heard it be called a couple of different things. It could be an informational interview, it can be an informal interview, but essentially these are a type of conversation you have with someone where you're asking them questions about their job, and this is outside the formal hiring interview process. So that's one of the main distinctions, that this is outside the formal interviewing hiring process. So through this video, I encourage you to find real federal employees. I encourage you to meet these people. So you can meet them in real life through the contacts that you've already developed in life. You can join professional organizations related to a topic or an affinity group, and they may have a directory that you can use. You can be part of other membership organizations that also happen to have federal employees in it. And I wanna encourage you to use your social media networks. I tend to be pro LinkedIn and that tends to be my main social media platform. The type of people that you wanna find to have these informational interviews are people that are at the place where you wanna work. That means the agency you wanna work at, the office in the agency you wanna work at, and ideally some people who have the job position that you want. So if you can't find someone, in the job position, at least find someone in the office. If you can't find someone in the office that you want to work at, find someone in the agency. And then all these ask all these people, like, can you help me find other people to talk to? That's a fair networking question to ask. So why do you want to have this informational interview or this informal conversation with these people? It's very different than the formal interview. This kind of conversation has a potential to give you a lot of honesty and honest feedback and honest information. You can also get much more details. So in a formal interview, it's very time limited and you may have an opportunity to ask questions, but it's not necessarily all the questions you wanna ask. And in the formal interview, people are gonna toe the company line, people are gonna make their employer out to be positive, and you want to hear a more realistic perspective on what's going on with that employer. In this informal setting, you're more likely to be able to have a conversation about the culture of the organization and the employee morale. You may have the opportunity, depending on the rapport you build with the person, to know if things are good or bad, not only in the agency, in the specific office, and you may be able to pick up on whether or not this person actually likes working there. You know, if you have a really close friend and they're having a bad time at work or they have an employer that's not the right fit for them, that person might come to you and, you know, tell you all the difficult, challenging things that are happening in the workplace. So you have that very candid uh, feedback on that workplace because you have a close connection to your friend. With one of these people who you don't have a close connection with, you know, it's obviously beneficial to you if someone comes and says outright, hey, I don't like where I work or I don't like my office or I don't like my job. That candidness is great, but not everyone's gonna take that risk, especially if they don't know you that well. So you have to sort of feel out in an informational interview, how happy is this person and how happy generally are people or is there a widespread issue in that agency? These types of insights are never gonna come out in a official interview unless something is going terribly bad. Another thing that leads to honesty in this conversation is where you have the conversation. So it's never helpful to ask too nuanced or too personal a question when someone's in their workspace because it's their workspace, they don't wanna risk a very honest answer there that someone else could hear and then use against them. 
So, you know, sometimes, you know, pre-COVID people would go out for coffee and people would have one-on-ones that way. So that's great. So long as the place where you're having the conversation is not where people that they work with can overhear you. Sometimes that's why a virtual or video call between two people is best outside of work hours because there's a lot of privacy that can be built in that conversation. No one else could be around, either in the family, uh, who else lives with them, or even in the workplace. Next, we should focus on what not to ask people, even in these types of informal conversations. So it's the year 2023. The internet is full of information. I would be very shocked if there's a federal agency that does not have its own developed website. So that's what I mean by publicly obvious information, which can also be read as publicly available information. So if you're scheduling one of these informal conversations with someone, you should be reading up on that agency's website. If there's a job posting that relates to a position you want in that person's exact office and agency, you should read that as well. Maybe even email that to them as background information should they have a few free minutes. But there's no point in having a conversation like this and asking someone about how many different offices there are or you know who the head of the agency is or what type of work the agency does all of that is publicly obvious and publicly available of course here are some caveats you very quickly met this person and very quickly set up this conversation and they didn't have time to research so you know be forthright say to them hey normally i would have researched your agency and learned more about it and learn more about your office but i didn't have time could you tell me so that's a i think a good caveat and a good exception for the rule you should not ask people about non-public information so that's a very strong phrase in government so i work in investigations but people can also work in research people can work in procedures policy policy implementation so federal employees cannot talk about non-public information it's a violation of their ethics rules so here's a distinction if a newspaper source or a social media source does a piece on some information about an agency and it reveals some information. That information is in the public realm, but that doesn't mean that according to the government, it's public information. The information did not come from the government, therefore it's still non-public. So when the government officially releases information like on its website or through an official report or through a legal filing, something that the government itself makes public and is in the public arena, then that's public information in that perspective. So you can ask about that. But again, don't ask any federal employee non-public information. You're just wasting your time and theirs because most of them won't answer it if they're following ethic regulations. And if they do answer it, then you know something about that person. And some of this is common sense, but never ask a question that's too personal. And you just have to use common sense and the lessons you've learned in life to figure out in this context with this person and and their personality and you know where and how we're meeting what is too personal one of the biggest mistakes i think people are making nowadays and even before is when to have these informational interviews and informal conversations so people come to me and they find me and then they say oh well i've already applied to your agency I'm like, okay, but there's like limited stuff I can help you with at that point. I think you should be having these conversations with people before you find the job announcement or the job posting. Another little trick that people don't know of is, um, you know, government hiring is not like private sector where someone can just sort of walk your resume over and then people might consider you and there may or not even be a posting. Some agencies, some offices, they will have an electronic list or an electronic stack of resumes. So employees are talking to the hiring managers and they're filtering resumes to that person. And these are standard resumes, maybe one page, two page. There's not the official resumes inside USA Jobs. And maybe that office is keeping a list of names and email addresses and positions that that person has said they're interested in. So that when a job announcement goes live on USA Jobs or on that agency's website like the Federal Reserve, 
that this list of people automatically gets emailed saying, hey, this posting is live and it's going to close soon. So just giving you a heads up. So that's one main, main reason to network with people before you find the job announcement. So when the job announcement goes live, you're among the first people to hear about it. Of course, you can do a safe search on USA Jobs. Of course, you can check USA Jobs every single day for interested job postings. But this is just another step up. Another thing some offices do is as soon as they have a job posting go live, they may email everyone in their office saying, hey, this posting is live, tell your friend, share it around. And then employees in those offices could be allowed and encouraged to then elevate that posting on their social media platforms, send it via email to people they know personally, that sort of thing. So another time to network with these people and ask these people for help is before you submit the final application. It's okay to ask people, hey, I've worked on my resume, I think it's nearly done, Can, would you mind taking a look and give me some edits? Or, hey, you know, you're allowed to submit a cover letter with a particular job posting, you wrote it, it's nearly done, you want to share it with someone, ask them for their feedback. All those things are fine, and I'll include writing samples with that. People can give you great advice, great tips, but if you already submitted something, then you're losing out on their advice, their tips. And this is all, you know, if people have time, and sometimes people don't. And they may say, hey, I don't have time, and then leave it at that. Or say, hey, I don't have time, but here I know a person who can help you, who's also in my office or something similar. Another time that people do come to me and other people I know for these informational conversations and interviews, but it's getting late in the process, is before the actual interview. So they submitted their application. I may never have seen it. They uh, made it through, and they got an invitation for an interview. So I did a separate video on structured behavioral interviews and how I mentored people with that. So if you have a contact, this person can you know, help you prepare for interviews specific to this position or specific to this office. Uh, that's great and you can do that in addition to you have general friends or general people in your network who help you with interview prep. This is a much more targeted interview prep. And the last stage in which people can can notify me or you know talk with me about their job application process, again, I think is a little bit late, is congratulations, they got an offer. So that's great. Uh, but you know, there's limited advice I can give them. I can, you know, tell them about the office, I can encourage salary negotiations, etc. But the advice becomes more limited as we get further along. The further, the more earlier you reach people in this whole process, the greater amount of advice that you could potentially come across. I hear a lot from people, um, in particular demographics, who say, well, I feel bad about asking people for so much help, or I feel really shy. And that's fine if you're like that, but then you're missing out. So you can ask someone for help, and I'm sure you're the type of person that would ask nicely and politely and ask for help with a resume before you attach a resume uh, on an email. And people are always free to say no. And if someone says no, the world hasn't ended, it's not a bad thing, it doesn't, it's not a negative thing on you. People can say no and then end it there. Uh, people can say no, like, I'll help you next time, or people can say no, but here's another person I can find for you. And if you are helping people, try your best to do that. When you can't help them, try to find someone else who's free that can't help them at that time. As I do in a lot of my videos, I reference Google and I reference online searches because now the internet is filled with so many much information. I don't need to do a specific video on the types of questions you should ask in an inf informational interview, generally because they need to be a little bit tailored to the person that you're speaking with, but the internet is full of information and advice that you can find. Uh, some have 30 questions, some have 40 questions, some ask five, um, but you know, find ones that you think are good and think about a number that's good for you. Thank you for watching my video. I'd love to hear from you on email at fmahmood at wellesley.edu. You can also find me on LinkedIn at that address. And if you do send me a connection request, please go ahead and send me a note. Before you go, please like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel. I'd really appreciate it. And please go ahead and watch my next video. Thank you.